Hello and welcome everybody and we are back. It's me, your boy King Demps and we're doing a brand new series today. That's right, shiny, new, ready to rock. Now the series we are doing is going to be called Scores on the Doors. Now what that will be is for every big tournament that happens this year, I will take a look at the team list. I will take a look at how they did in said tournament and I will give them a grade from A to F. A being the best grade and F being a fail. Now, bear in mind with these scores that they're going to take into account the expectations for each team. For example, Na'Vi are not going to get the same score as Complexity if they both reach the semi-finals of an event. They're different teams. They've got different expectations coming into it. They will get different grades. I will also be taking into account how well the teams played, what the scores were in each game, who they played. Basically, it's not just going to be based on the results. I'm going to take a little bit of a closer look as well. And hopefully we can get an interesting set of scores throughout the year. We can take a look at how teams did at different points. And hopefully it should just be a lot of fun and create a lot of engaging discussion. Oh, that brings me to the other important point. Make sure you let me know in the comments or tweet me, whatever it is. Let me know your scores for each event. Let me know what you agreed with. Let me know what you disagreed with. Let's get some discussion going, baby. Without further ado, we're going to get stuck in with the very first team on our list, and that is FaZe. Now, with this FaZe team, it finally looks like we have a FaZe that can challenge for trophies in 2022, something they really struggled with last year in 2021. We had Rops looking like a superstar. We had the rest of the team looking in decent shape, even the recently maligned Rain, who's had a few criticisms, particularly towards the end of last year, thrown at his play. And the rest of the team basically looked good as well. What was most impressive was that late round trio of Brokey, Rops and Twists. That looks like that's going to be very dangerous and tough to deal with for any team. A lot of skill, a lot of game sense, a lot of playmaking between those three. Now, if we take a look at their games and who they played, they obviously made a little bit of a meal of the early part of their Blast campaign. They got taken to overtime by Liquid twice and by Vitality, obviously losing the Vitality game. And it made it a little bit difficult where exactly to peg phase because, you know, they just had losses. They had wins. They went to overtime and everything. It wasn't looking super clear, even if there were flashes of good stuff, flashes of bad stuff. But to be honest, by the time we got to the end of the Blast Spring groups, they were looking pretty good. This overpass against Vitality was fantastic. Their CT side was amazing. Lots of different looks. They were using ROPs like a brute force hammer just to smash Vitality in the face on that CT side. And their T side, they looked like they had more than enough entry power to get things going to make things interesting. And then again, against Big, they look really good, except for uh, the one. Yeah, yeah, we, we, won't, we won't mention too much about this one, 16-2. Oh, sis, I'm kind of banging them out a little bit. But like I said, in general, FaZe were looking pretty good come the end of the group stage. Now, the score I'm giving FaZe, I'm giving them a B. It was a very solid effort. I think the resume of teams they beat wasn't quite good enough to get them a better score, but they beat most of the teams that was put in front of them. They got revenge on Vitality and looked very comfortable in that overpass game, and Vitality also qualified and looked good at this event. And basically, that overpass against Vitality and generally the way they looked in the series against Big is what gets them their overall B score. They qualified and got the job done. They looked good in doing so. Rops was integrated well into the team. That's a B for FaZe. Now, the next team on Scores on the Doors are going to be OG, another team that finished in that one to third bracket in Blast Premier Spring Groups, and they were another team that looked pretty good in doing so. They were probably the best looking team at the whole event if we just look at results. They only dropped one map to NIP. And in general, the roles looked very good on the team. Obviously, they've swapped Nexa in for Alexi B. And actually, that kind of looked like a decent swap with the way the roles were shaking out. Flames was given a little bit more of a star role. I think some of the pressure on Mantu was relieved. And I think that's only going to be good for him going forward. And Nexa himself seemed to, in some of these games in particular, step up and really go hard. Like, like, bro, check this shit out. Check... 180. Uh, the, 
only real negative you can kind of put on OG's performance is they did kind of play a bit of a meh resume of teams. They didn't really end up playing any of the other teams at this event that looked really, really good. The team they played who's probably looking in the best shape was Nip, and they were like, meh, but we'll talk about them later. So OG get themselves a B plus. That's right, a big, fat, juicy plus sign on that bad boy. The reason they can't get themselves an A is, like I say, the resume of teams they played wasn't so great, but they beat what was put in front of them. They beat what was put in front of them very convincingly, and they look good while doing so. That's a B plus in the Demps books. Now, the final team in that first to third bracket is the Franco-Danish extravaganza that is Vitality. Now, it was overall a pretty good start for the new look roster, but it wasn't all plain sailing right from the beginning. They got taken to overtime by phase in a best of one and then beaten by phase in a best of one on overpass. Particularly in that overpass game, they looked a little bit short of an elite team. They were struggling a little bit to find the entry power, struggling a little bit with the firepower overall because Zebu didn't have like one of his absolute best games. And that was kind of starting to worry me. I was like, mm, are we just going to see another Vitality where Zewu has to go mega stupid, outrageously ham, like old school simple on old school Na'Vi just to get anything done? That was what it was starting to look like. And I was kind of starting to worry where the firepower was going to come from. But as they got to the knockout stage, things started to look a little better. And it really looked good in that final series versus G2. I mean, look at this stuff right here. They won a series. Zewu wasn't even top fragging. He didn't even have the best ADR. Two people have more ADR. So obviously we got to put this Vitality run down as a success. I'm also giving them a B plus, baby. Might seem like I'm being a little bit more generous to them than I was FaZe. I only gave FaZe B. I give Vitality a B plus. But actually, I think particularly the manner in which Vitality took down G2. I think G2 are a better team than Big, who FaZe beat to qualify. And I think the promising nature of Vitality's performance, the fact that Zewu didn't have to go ham YOLO, really has me feeling good about this Vitality. And it just gives them that little plus. Just that little plus. The fact that they did it without Zewu just... Popping heads left and right gives them just just a little little ooh, little ooh, little bit more. So B plus for Vitality. Now that brings us to the other three teams that qualified for the spring final at the first time of asking. And the first of those is big Jesus Christ. They played a lot of games compared to some teams. Fucking OG like did like two games. What's going on? Putting the amount of games that they played aside, big are looking so much better than last year. They seem to have a better balance of roles in terms of just sheer effectiveness. They actually look like they can consistently beat decent teams. Obviously, they dropped two best of ones to NIP, who didn't look themselves the most convincing in this group, and they dropped a best of three to FaZe, but they did end up beating Astralis twice. They beat Evil Geniuses, and they beat Complexity. Basically, they generally weren't tested enough to score really highly, I think, and get a good grade from me, but they qualified, they did what they had to do, they beat what was put in front of them, and they looked better than they did at the end of 2021 in doing so, so they've got to get a positive score at the very least. I think for me, they're going to squeak, and this is by the skin of their teeth they're going to squeak this, but it's a B-. minus. I think the main reason that I'm giving them a B- is because they looked pretty competitive overall in the series against FaZe, and that gives me hope that by the end of the group stage, they kind of shaken off those two losses to Nip and were getting more into their groove. They went 16-14 or 16-13 against FaZe in one of the maps, and then absolutely busted FaZe's ass on Overpass. So uh, overall looking pretty promising for Big and Searson fragging out like he is one of the best players in the world like he did in 2020 is super promising for Big going forwards. So yeah, in case you forgot or I didn't mention it, B- minus for Big. Good work. Obviously, that means we got to take a look at Na'Vi next. Also qualified in that fourth to sixth bracket. And honestly, 
not good enough. I'm just going to come straight out C- minus for Na'Vi. It was pretty diabolical in general, losing their two opening best of ones, not really looking at the races at all against MIBR, kind of got just blasted by a team who probably aren't of tier one quality. And then they get squeaked past by Astralis, who themselves are looking like they got a lot of problems. Yeah, even though they did recover, obviously, with that 2-0 against Liquid, they then lost to NIP and had to beat them in the rematch. So, in general, it was looking pretty shaky from Na'Vi and gets them a C-. The fact of the matter is they lost two best of ones and a best of three and still managed to qualify. Really, really uninspiring stuff. The only reason that they're not getting like a disastrous score of like a D or something is because in brief flashes, they did look their imperious best. I would say there was one map against NIP where they look banger. And in general, towards the end, Simple was getting better. It was starting to look a little bit more like the old Navi. I expect them to do better going forward. I think this was a, a little bit of a warm up for vent for them. I can understand struggling to get motivated for a weird format like this, considering at the end of last year, they were playing like high stakes games on LAN in finals and winning them. I can see how the mentality, it's, it's difficult to get yourselves up for games like this against MIBR and, you know, even someone like Liquid, for example. Expect Na'Vi to go be do better going forward, but C- minus for this one. It was crap. That means next up, we are taking a look at G2, the final team to grab themselves a qualification for the Spring Finals. And generally, G2 looked pretty good throughout this event. They dropped, obviously, that best of three series to Vitality, which there is no shame in. I showed you that series earlier, but Vitality generally were looking really good towards the end of this event. So, again... No shame in that. And we kind of got to see a little bit of everything from G2. We got to see them absolutely spank NIP and MIBR on both maps. We got to see them, and this is very, very important, grind back a difficult win against NIP. Let's have a look at that one a little bit closer. So here we have the match page for that game against NIP. And as you can see, things were looking super dire for G2. They were 8 to 15 down. They were on their CT side. Economy in the bin. And they managed to grind the game all the way back. And what is very impressive is they did so without playing particularly well. Nico wasn't exactly going ham, you know, playing perfectly fine, but not his imperious form that we've kind of seen from him towards the end of last year. Hunter was actually getting the heavy lifting done. And the fact that they were behind on first kills, they were behind on team rating and still managed to win the game... These are the kind of games that G2 would be on the wrong end of last year. They would be the team who would be in the driver's seat and get and come back on. The fact that they're able to do it like this and to grind this win out gives me a lot of hope moving forward for G2 that they're going to have ironed out some of those issues that they had towards the end of last year. Feeling good about G2. That brings me to my score for G2, uh, which is going to be a B. Just a solid B. Looked good. I liked what I was seeing. Obviously, we remember that Monacy clutch, that absolutely bananas clutch that Monacy pulled off. So, G2, all things are pointing towards a successful year. The reason they can't get themselves like a cheeky little B+, obviously, they lost to Vitality. But also, if they'd have played someone better in this final best of three and beaten them 2-0 and looked good, then maybe they could have got themselves a B+. But they kind of banged out MIBR, who, you know, MIBR are not yet a tier one team. So, that's the main reason G2 couldn't get a better score, but a B all good, all solid. Let's go. Obviously, this means we're now getting to the teams that did not do quite so well at Blast. And the first up on the docket for that is Astralis finishing in 7th to ninth place. Now, we've got to be honest with ourselves here. Things are looking pretty rough for Astralis. They looked really good in the Blast event towards the end of last year. I believe it was the full finals, which was their first event as a team. Came top three. We're looking very good. Config was banging out. Blame F was banging out. Everything was pointing towards this Astralis lineup, having a pretty nice, solid upward trajectory. Ever since then, it's looked pretty flat and pretty poor. They just don't seem to be able to find a mix of roles which suits everybody on the team. And that is really worrying for a team who, when they were that absolute monster that was winning back to back to back majors and dominating the scene, what made them so good or part of what made them so good was the fact that every single player fit in their role absolutely perfectly. It's looking like that isn't the case with the exact same in-game leader in Glaive. So kind of worrying signs for Astralis going forward. 
Lucky is back orping, but it isn't really going to be getting you massive numbers. He's fine and solid in his own way on the orp, but he's never going to bang superstar numbers. And considering Config isn't the player that he was billed to be when he joined this Astralis team, he was supposed to be being that other star player alongside Blame F. They were meant to be the star duo getting shit done, and Config just isn't. He just isn't. He's not fragging. Blame F is still banging, so that's good, but... When Glaive has dropped off a cliff recently as well, and and Zipnix is not, he just seems washed. Like it, it's getting to a point now where you're like, okay, so the only bright spot on this roster is Blame F, and like, what are we doing, man? If that's all that this is, is just the Blame F show, then well, like that that's not the Astralis pedigree. That's not the Astralis brand. If we take a look, they actually still did manage to win a best of one against Na'Vi. Normally, you'd be given a massive thumbs up for that, but this Na'Vi, we know, was not super motivated to start this event. They really didn't look their best, and, you know, it wasn't the Na'Vi at the, that we saw at the end of last year, let's put it that way. And then a best of one against MIBR, who, yeah, you know, MIBR beat Na'Vi themselves and looked okay in patches, beat Cole 2-0, but, like, again, not a Tier 1 team. So, really, not good for Astralis. They're getting a D minus. It's not quite like an E or an F. It's not like a complete and total disaster because they did win some games. They weren't like blown off the server in every single match they played. But yeah, it, it's not looking good for Astralis. It's really not. And I, I can't see them getting much better before Katowice, to be honest with you. Next up on the docket, NIP 7th to 9th. Now, what are we feeling for Nip? I think if there's one thing you can 100% take away, it's that NIP are still hugely over-reliant on Hampus, even more so now that Device is gone from the team. The game basically for NIP hinges on whether Hampus goes off or not. If he goes off, they win. If he doesn't, they don't win. It's basically a very simple dichotomy at the moment. The one good thing I would say individually for NIP is Plopsky actually had a couple decent maps in this one. Um... Okay, so I'm looking at it, he, 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 you know, he did, he did have a couple good ones, like a 1.55 against, oh, that's pretty good, and then, oh, he also had a couple of bad ones, oh, dang, that, oh, oh, that's looking, that's looking nasty. Okay, so maybe I won't harp on too much about that Plopsky point, but he did have a couple of maps where he was, like, the main carry force, and the Plopsky of last year didn't really ever do that, so, you know, it's something. What we really need is we really need to see a hell of a lot more from Rez if this team is going to be a consistent threat. I don't know what happened to Rez, man. He seems to just kind of be petering out into this, like, whatever rifler who will have the odd map where he looks really good. But in general, he's going to underwhelm. In general, he's going to look like he's falling short of his skill ceiling. I don't know, man. Something's got to happen with Rez to, like, give him a kick up the arse and, and make him become the player I think he can be. I don't know if it's going to happen in this Nip team. I think he's too comfortable, if I'm being perfectly honest. But it was a relatively successful, unsuccessful run as far as thing goes. They beat Big twice in best of ones. They ran G2 very close and probably should have won that. Beat Na'Vi in a best of three. But it was, you know, the Na'Vi that we saw at this event, which wasn't so great. Did take a map off of OG and then lost to Na'Vi in the rematch. Uh, it kind of just seems like NIP are going to be the NIP kind of that we saw last year where their peaks are like pretty decent actually they can be like a top three team if they peak at the right time hampers plays well device comes back and starts orping people yeah they can be maybe like a top three team at their peak but i think their general level is gonna be like top 10 between 10 and 5 they're gonna like reach playoffs most of the time they're gonna beat some teams win some maps but yeah they're not gonna be an imperious force in counter-strike what am I giving him? I have it written down over here. That's why, that's why I'm looking. I'm giving him a C. I've written down C- minus over there. I think that's a little bit harsh. I think I'll give him a C. They look tight. They don't have device, so fair enough. Yeah. Meh. Right, it is time to get acquainted with some Brazilian boys. M-I-B-R. Now... I actually feel pretty good. I'm just scrolling on my document to where I've I've made some some notes about MIBR. Actually feeling pretty good about MIBR right about now. Yes, obviously 7th to 9th, didn't qualify, lost a lot of games, whatever. But best of one against Na'Vi. I don't care if it's an unmotivated Na'Vi. I don't care if it's Na'Vi that were looking poor at the start of this event. That is still a legit best of one win. That is still impressive. MIBR were very aggressive in that game took the fight to Na'Vi, weren't afraid, 
really, really good on the opening jewels and the entry frags, which they were actually generally good in, even if they lost some of these games. So that all looked very good for MIBR. And, okay, right. Brunzan. Brunzan. Breno. Brenozan. Breno. Yeah, I'm going to call my man BRN. Uh, BRN was uh, a banger, actually. Looked really, really good in some of these games. Um, like, had some very high impact, some great individual playmaking. In the Inferno against G2, he was the only guy really putting up any resistance. Holding down Banana like a motherfucker. Um, really liked watching BRN play and think he looks good. It'd be interesting to see what they do with the team full time obviously i know he's going to continue playing with them at katowice because you know this is the lineup they're in europe with this is what they've had practice with but it'd be interesting to see moving forward because i know cello bangs out for mibr normally and is normally like one of their star players but you know brn's been popping some heads he's been doing some some shit over here in europe basically mibr get a c plus um beating navi was good beating complexity 2-0 showed that they a pretty solid team they're gonna beat those teams that are worse than them they're not one of those tier two teams i think that are gonna be like oh yeah well we'll see flashes and upset potential and stuff from them no i actually think they're a solidly good tier one team uh sorry i actually think they're a solidly good tier two team and will hopefully be able to grind throughout the rest of this year i'm looking forward to seeing them in future blasts i think if we can see like a marked improvement at the next blast i'll be really really excited for mibr going forwards like, this could be a good year for Brazil. You know, God sent doing stuff. Maybe OO Nation might actually become relevant. Like, this could be a good year for Brazilian CS. And I think MIBR's performance of Blast, yes, they didn't qualify. Yes, they kind of got banged out by Vitality and G2 pretty convincingly. But before that point, they were looking competitive. It was looking good at points. And even in the Vitality and G2 games, there were some flashes that made me think, like, yeah, there's something here. There's something to be worked with. So MIBR, C+. Keep going, babies. Now... We're getting to uh, we're getting to the rough portion of this video. Uh, we'll start with EG. These are the three last place teams, all NA teams. NACS dead. It's dead. Just give it give, give it a eulogy. You know, let everyone open the casket and have one last look and just bury it. No, but you know, in all seriousness, um, starting with EG. I mean, they ran Liquid close in that map, but they got banged out by Vitality in the opener. Picked up a map against Big, but like generally didn't ever really look that close in that series. Definitely a long way to go. One of the biggest worries for me was actually seeing Automatic top frag in the Big series. On the one hand, you might be like, surely that's a good thing. It means he's coming back from Valorant looking strong. It means he's put the hours in, you know, individually he's there. Yeah, but if a guy who hasn't played CS for like a year, two years, whatever, suddenly comes in and starts like being the best rated player on your team, isn't that worrying for the rest of your team? Like, what about Stewie who's been playing the game all this time? What about Cirque and Breezy? Where the hell are they? They're still not doing anything. They still look like a couple of bums. Like, I'm giving this EG run a D+. Plus solely because they picked up a map off of big so they're not a complete load of trash and solely because they ran liquid close again means they can't be total trash but yeah i'm not feeling it right now with this eg project yeah obviously that means we've got to move on to liquid um liquid did pick up a map win uh obviously against compatriots eg uh but that was their only win uh, did run face very close twice, though, so I'm not as down on Liquid as I was on EG. The fact that they ran phase close twice and phase looked good in this event gives me some hope for Liquid moving forward, and it's the first event. That gives me hope that there's something to build on, basically. The fact that they can take phase close and that they can beat their compatriots of EG. There, it looks like there's something to build on there. They actually kind of got an unfortunate, like, draw as well, in some senses. The fact that they had to play Phase twice, and then they had to play Na'Vi after Na'Vi had had, like, a weak start, and were probably going to be looking to prove something, like, just kind of unfortunate for Liquid. They got a bit of a rough end of the, of the draw on that one. Um, I'm giving them a C-, but I actually, 
like my brain kind of wants to give them a C, but the fact that the only map win they picked up was EG, and I thought EG looked crap, and they will run really close by EG, kind of a little bit worrying, and they couldn't actually get over the line either of those phase games. Like the score, I think, is reflective on the work they did at this event, but I think with circumstances kind of being unfortunately against them a little bit, uh, it's not that bad. My main concern is shocks bro shocks just wasn't really offering anything i don't really see what role he plays on this team they're gonna have to like figure out what they're doing with shocks before liquid i think are gonna be any good and i wouldn't be surprised if shocks was like pretty quickly replaced if things aren't aren't happening like shocks for floppy now we're cooking with gas on liquid just my opinion though c minus but it's all right it's not bad uh, the final team that I'm going to talk about, and it will be the lowest score, is Complexity. They're getting an E. It's not good. It's really not good. Um, never threatened to win that big or that G2 game. 16-14 and 16-13 to MIBR. It looks relatively close, but really, again, MIBR kind of felt in control of both of those games for the majority of it. All that Complexity have really played much of is Nuke. So it looks like their map pool is thin as paper right now. They don't really seem to have a real identity yet either. I'm not sure who's supposed to be the star players. I'm not sure what everybody is, is really doing. Like the mesh of that team isn't quite working. Junior has looked like, like really not look good in general with the orb. I've not been a fan of what I'm seeing from Junior. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been pretty poor from complexity so far, both including the, um, the fun spark event and this one. It's like, in some senses, it's kind of hard to gauge exactly where they are. Fun spark. They played with JT with like a thousand ping. So whatever, I'm happy to give that the benefit of the doubt, but here, like they just looked so nothing. Like they weren't completely blown out. So, like, there aren't super obvious mistakes and errors where you can be like, okay, well, like, they're getting absolutely banged out because of this. But then they're not getting close enough to be like, yeah, here's stuff we can pick up and run with and here's what we can work on. It's kind of that awkward thing where you're getting beaten pretty comfortably, but not banged out enough to know what's going wrong and not getting close enough to know what's going well. Like, you're just in that really weird, like, purgatory as a team of like, yeah, we're not total shit, but that's, like, basically all you can say about us. The reason they ain't getting an F is because they didn't get banged out in every game. Like, if they had every game single digits and then maybe they hadn't even made 10 in, in both of the games against MIBR, I probably would have given them an F. Like, this complexity team is the team I was least excited about at Blast um, coming into it. And they just kind of confirmed it. They looked, like, poor. They just didn't look good. Um, rest in peace, NA. We loved you. We'll never forget you. But, but yeah, no, yeah, no. Thank you for watching, boys and girls and otherwise, whatever you are or identify as, I love you. Here's the final team list, boys and girls. Um, I might even do a little thing where I like, like, I'll, do you know what? I am going to, I'm going to do a little thing where I like B, A, whatever, whatever I gave all these teams. Um, so you can have a look here and see the, the scores so far. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of the video. Let me know what you think of my scores. Agree, disagree, argue, debate, whatever the hell you like. Uh, if you like the video, you know, hit that thumb up button. Tell all your mates. And if you did not like it, you're dumb. You're just dumb. <laughs>